there you go like a glove but only like a glove because I had to cut it down four times I think today is going to be a good day. The reason I think today is going to be a good day is because of this coincidence. So I've got a deburring tool, right? One of these. When I bought this, it came with several spare blades and a nice little pack. And by absolute coincidence, I found that when I emptied this into the handle where you store all the extra blades, my pack of three mil drill bits fits perfectly into this case. And now, rather than having loads and loads of spare drill bits knocking around, I can now store them in a case like that. So basically where the floor hooks are that go through the standard floor and into the chassis, there is a rivet pushed into the body of the van and then you can screw into that rivet. Unfortunately, when we took this one out, the whole rivet came with it. So you can normally fill the, the, the tapered screw hole with sealant or something like that and then paint over it and it'll do just fine. But this is too large to be able to actually fill and it goes straight through into a hollow and I can see the bottom of the van. So there is gonna be potentially moisture coming out. So uh, Her Majesty the Queen is gonna help us with this solution and we're gonna use a penny. The penny is gonna go right on top there and it's gonna seal it down. So I'm gonna epoxy it and then that's gonna serve as a sealant. To be able to do that, I'm just gonna abrade the paint on the top, take some of the paint off, clean it with some 99% acetone and then I'm going to apply a epoxy solution to it and then stick the coin down. Obviously the coin is going to be face up and uh, Her Majesty the Queen is going to be immortalised in our van forever. So let's get going. I mean, you've probably heard of that rule, measure twice, cut once. Well, unless you're a cabinet maker or really skilled at woodwork, then likelihood is that rule doesn't apply to you. I always have to go back and take a little edge off here, sand a bit down there. It just happens. There you go like a glove but only like a glove because I had to cut it down four times
that is not light. Starting to question our choice of vinyl flooring now. We deliberately went thick because we wanted it to be comfier underfoot and we didn't want to lay underlay and the vinyl separately so we thought we'd do it as a wanna but that is heavy. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to get it off the, off the roll, off the tube and bent out without scraping all of the all of the walls and ripping the walls and stuff like that this might be a little bit tricky mm. I don't I don't even think opening the back doors is really necessarily going to help all that much um, unless I was to have one of those like like a kitchen roll holder if I don't like a massive one of those for this then that might help well I'll give it a go we'll give it a go let's try and see The reason I don't want to I don't want to do it out the back door because I don't want to put it down on the ground because there's nothing like if I just pull it it's going to scrape on the ground and I don't want to do that it's like I could put it on a towel but it would just roll off the towel so okay. tell you what it was minus it was minus six in this van when I first got in it this morning I've had the heater running and I've got three jumpers on and I am absolutely roasting now so I'm going to take one of these off because I think this is going to get quite hot have you ever tried to play a didgeridoo? So I've just trimmed down the back, really so that I can just shut the back doors to be honest. But I brought I brought three things to be able to do the job. One was a really super sharp knife with a new blade in it. The other one is a kind of a block of wood so that I could push the corners in if I needed to uh, and something to lean on as well as maybe providing a bit of a straight line and then a pair of scissors just in case. In the end all I did was use the knife so um, that cut, cut through really easily and we've got really thick vinyl. So these are the offcuts. As you can see, they're really, really um, uneven. I really was just trimming down the back. I've left excess so that I can make a nice neat line, but it is just trimming down the back. So you can see with our vinyl, there is, it's quite thick and we've got like a, a felt bottom with a foam inside and then a vinyl top, which is this wood effect. Um, the actual name of this and everything um, I'll give uh, I'll give to you but this the reason we went for this is because it is really thick and we didn't want to lay underlay and then lay something on top separately we just kind of wanted it all in a wanna it actually works out that this is um, this is actually the, the same pretty much the same price as thinner vinyl we did consider thinner vinyl at first um, and we got something like five or six different samples and uh, we just lay them out in the living room and in the kitchen and stuff like that and just trod on them um, to see how they felt when we were stood having a chat just stood on that piece of vinyl you could very quickly feel your like when you're barefoot you could very quickly feel like your ankles and the bottom of your foot getting really really tired um, and really sore whereas when we trod on this and stood on it for a bit it was a lot more cushioned underfoot and, and it just felt better I also think that maybe um, the foam in this is going to provide a bit of in extra insulation it's not why we did it but it, it Potentially, potentially it'll help. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really chuffed with how it looks. Given that um, we've got no lights on in the van, I've got all the doors shut and all the windows that we've got are like quite dark tinted windows for obvious reasons. Um, it's like, it's really, the color is quite light um, and I think it's gonna suit. So on to actually cutting it down properly now, cutting it down to its actual shape around the wheel arch and everything like that. 
and then we are gonna have to glue it down so excited for that one thing I am gonna do is again so I heated up this van and it brought it back up to uh, like four or five degrees but then just having the door open to put this through has meant that it's dropped down to I mean I don't know but it's dropped down to below zero in here again because I can see my breath so what I'm gonna have to do is bring the heater back in now that's for two reasons first reason is because it's going to make the vinyl itself when it's warmer you know it's a it's a it's a plastic it's a type of plastic so the warmer it gets the more malleable it gets um so i'm going to be able to sort of shape it a little bit easier without like creasing it because i did find that when i was putting it in it was it was almost getting creased in some places if i'd pushed it any further it would have done but also secondly is that i need the environment <laughs> Um, to be warmed up. I need the floor is in the plyboard to be warm. I need the floor is in the vinyl to be warm. And I also need the adhesive that we're going to stick it down with to be warm. So the adhesive I've, I've kept in the um, in the house for a few days. So it is generally a warm temperature. But I do need to warm this area up. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> This is tricky. This is actually really hard. <laughs> oh man. Essentially what the plan is, is to glue down the floor today and pretty much leave it for the entire day, not come back in here so that it has to time to set. Our initial plan was to have a kind of, like a curve up the side so that any water that ran to the side just ran back down again. Um, but that hasn't worked out because of the type of vinyl that we've got. It's so thick that we can't get that curve we want without extending quite far into the into the space. Um, or if we really push it into the corner, it risks pulling away from whatever adhesive that we're gonna stick it down with. So we've decided to go against that plan i think if you had a thinner vinyl then you wouldn't have that issue so we've cut around the edges uh, more accurately so what we've done is we've cut literally around these edges here along here whereas we would have uh, rolled it up that corner but instead yeah we're just going to butt up against it we've left a few overhangs uh, where we want to get a more accurate cut and i've done the same uh, towards the back there one of the things i've needed to do was to actually bring the van up to the right temperature. Now, warming the van up with all this insulation is actually pretty easy nowadays, but we needed to bring the van up to at least 15 degrees C, and currently in here it is 18 degrees C. So I've just been, I've had the fan blow in, I've had the adhesive inside rather than in the garage, and that way everything's kind of prepared to go. Now, the floor is obviously gonna be a little bit colder than the rest of the van, but I think if the van is generally a warm temperature, that's, that's good enough for me. I've got a few things ready these bits here so I've got this mainly just for cutting in this trowel is is um, is left over from when I did my bathroom floor um, and it does have the right grooves you've got to pay attention to which grooves you you need it does say on the tub of adhesive that you buy what actual grooves you need I think in all honesty probably considering its use and stuff like that in the van it's not gonna make a massive difference but you don't want massive grooves of adhesive for this application you want tiny ones like this the one thing this probably will come handy in is getting any air bubbles out of the vinyl although we've got such a thick vinyl that i don't think air bubbles is really going to be a massive issue and then for the actual adhesive itself um so i deliberated over this for quite a while ended up going for ultra bond vs 90 plus now ultra bond vs 90 is for for things like 
vinyl, PVC, etc. And then plus basically just means it's high temperature. This will mean that if we're in a particularly hot environment uh, or we are, I don't know, midsummer and we leave all the windows closed for whatever reason and go, go out um, and the, the van heats up, then the adhesive isn't gonna come loose and then let the, the edges of the vinyl peel up. And then also I'm thinking that high temperature also is although probably not advertised for this reason, it probably does something similar for cold temperatures, I'd imagine. So if we are in, I don't know, snow, then yeah, again, it's it's probably gonna um, keep it keep it attached to the floor. And that's essentially it, really. So I've got those got those things. I've got gloves, got the right trowels, got the adhesive. I've cut down the the um, the vinyl to the right size. What I have done also is I've swept everything out of the van. So any kind of foam or any tape or anything like that that could get trapped underneath the vinyl when I'm. Uh, putting the adhesive down and then cause like a little bit of a bump. I want to avoid that. The final thing that I did uh, yesterday was to actually there was a, there was a a floorboard. There was a floorboard loose ever so slightly and it just kind of rocked. It's basically because the battens, although I've bought them in a pack because they're not plain, they're kind of rough sawn and this is the you know the blue treated timber. They're not all the exact same size. So where I've laid the flooring over the top of that it rocks slightly so what I've done is I've screwed it down just so it rocks a little less but there is still a bit of a bump there it's unavoidable unless I ripped up the whole floor just gonna have to live with it likelihood is we'll probably tread it down and it'll become less noticeable over time I'm probably not gonna like talk through um, doing this I'm just gonna do it I'll do a bit of a time lapse and you can you can see what I'm doing that's how I got to this point that's how I prepared for this point and um, yeah, so let's crack on. Oh, hi there. You'll notice a few things have changed. One of the things is I'm looking increasingly like a caveman. The other thing is we have a new floor. The floor is finally in and it looks great. But there's two other things, one good, one bad. The bad thing is behind me looks a little bit different, doesn't it? We've got a leak. The good thing, however, we have a bulkhead. You can just see the corner of it there. Did you see it? That's coming up next. So if you want to make sure you're keeping up to date with how we're getting on with the bulkhead and how much we're crying over that leak, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow on next week. See you soon. One good, one bad. See you soon.